Hey guys, Brent Boyer from Adam again. So let's talk divorce. I want to talk about a question that uh, that came up here recently when talking to a potential client. And they were asking the question, uh, how does the real estate market affect my divorce? So I'm getting divorced and I own a house. How does that affect things? Um, what does that mean to me as far as my divorce, as far as the timeline, as far as uh, living together, living apart, what to do with the house and how to uh, do things with the with the house here. So I wanted to get into that a little bit and of course uh, don't forget to like and Like the video subscribe to the channel that helps us out a lot So this question of what to do and how to do it and what's going on So what we're talking about first of all here is you're getting a divorce going you're in the beginning stages Or you're thinking about a divorce or maybe you're even a few months in on your divorce and you own a house together and so you know the question becomes what does this mean if I'm in a good market, if I'm in a, a strong real estate market, houses are selling right away, prices are going up, how does that affect things in my divorce as far as the house? Well, what that can mean is it's going to be, you know, basically the, the value of the house is higher. That's likely to mean you're going to have more equity in your house. And then if you're going to go, uh, if you're getting divorced and you're trying to decide who's going to keep the house and who's moving out and what you're going to do, uh, that can affect that decision. So. You know, if your house is worth more money, that's great, except that at the time of a divorce, now you're dividing it and it's turning into more money that you need to pay your wife if you're planning on keeping the house. So that's one way to look at it. Of course, it's better in a good real estate market. It's just kind of better for everybody. The prices are up, houses sell faster. So if you're looking at uh, what to do with your house in a divorce, it's better for you if it's, a, if it's a good market because it means you can get rid of the house right away. If you're looking to sell it, you'll be able to sell it quickly. If one of you is looking to keep it, it can mean higher prices. So it might mean that you're, you're keeping the house at a higher price and you gotta decide, is, am I willing to do this? Am I willing to take it at this overinflated price and pay my wife the equity? So, you know, for example, if I'm living in a neighborhood that's normally $300,000 homes and come to get the time to get divorced, all of a sudden my home's worth 350 now because the market's up. Well, $300,000 homes, now it's worth 350. Let's say I owe 200. So I got a house worth 350, I owe 200 on the mortgage. If I'm gonna keep it, that means there's a 150,000 in equity in this house. So that would mean I'm gonna get divorced. I owe my wife $75,000. And the question is when, of when, you know, when do I have to pay this 75,000 to her? Well, I mean, normally the answer's right away. I mean, if you're gonna get divorced, you're gonna go your separate ways, you're deciding to keep the house, your wife is likely to say, well, I, I need my money right away. She's not gonna want you to make payments or put things on hold or wait for later or whatever. So if you're gonna keep it and it's a, a hot market, a good real estate market, it can, it can hurt you a little bit because you're looking at a higher price for a house, you're looking at paying out more money to keep it and it can cost you. Now, if you're gonna to agree to sell it, that would be better because it's easier to sell it in a good market and you get more money out of it and everybody wins. And that could affect your decision in the divorce. So you may decide, you know, let's just sell it. I don't really want to pay what I think might be too much money for this house and there's really no room to negotiate maybe. So you're sort of stuck with a, a yes or no on that. And you say, well, I don't really want to keep the house at this price. So you agree to sell it, you know, assuming your wife is not looking to keep the house. Now, if your wife is wanting to keep the house, then same deal. She's looking at, okay, if it's worth 350, you owe 200, 150,000 in equity. Now I owe him 75,000. So you get divorced, your wife would owe you 75,000. She keeps the house. Of course, you'd want to take into account the fact that you need her to refinance the mortgage, get your name off the mortgage. If your name's not on the mortgage, you know, that's great. But if it is, you'd want to be either selling it or having her refinance. You don't want somebody keeping a house with your name on the mortgage and the mortgage is not getting paid off or refinanced. So those are some thoughts as far as that. Now, if it's a bad housing market, you know, what if things are down and we're in kind of a slump? Well, how that affects your divorce could mean it'll take longer to sell the house. Now, in either scenario, whether the house sells quickly or takes a long time to sell, you can still get divorced right away, meaning I can have my divorce completed even if we haven't sold the house or haven't completed the refinance. If we have a commitment, we know we know a plan, we've worked out a deal, we can put all that in writing, have that be enforceable, be part of a divorce judgment. 
it doesn't have to all happen prior to the divorce being completed. So that's important. So with the house, if we're in a slower market, we can say, well, we're going to agree to sell it, but you know, let's wait till summer because that, that's kind of the better time to sell a house anyways, or wait till whatever might be the case in your situation. Now, if you're going to wait, you can still get divorced right away. Um, divorce, of course, has its own built-in waiting periods, but you know, let's assume you got everything worked out, you're beyond the waiting period, and now you're looking to finalize your divorce, get a judgment of divorce entered, and be done. You can do that even if you haven't sold the house yet. You maybe, haven't even, maybe you haven't even listed it yet. You, at that point, you just need an agreement of when you're going to list it, how you're going to do it, what are the details, and some things in place to make it enforceable and to make things so that you can hold, hold her accountable and that you know things are going to move forward when the time comes. So you don't, you don't have to do all these things prior to the divorce being completed. Sometimes there's a reason to wait. You know, sometimes you say, well, let's wait till our oldest, or sorry, the, the youngest son is out of high school. So maybe we want to wait a couple years before we even sell the house. Because we know we don't really, neither, neither of us really want to keep the house long term, but we want to keep it in place for the next year or so, or maybe two years, whatever it might be with school for the kids and whatever is affecting your decisions about keeping the house. So people make decisions in their divorce where they temporarily might keep a house too, even though they know long term they're probably not gonna stay there, they don't wanna keep it, it's too much house, it's too much uh, trouble. So then a decision that comes into this, uh, that, that affects these things of course is who's living there. Are we gonna keep living in the house during the divorce? Would you live together after the divorce because the house hasn't been sold yet or isn't going to be sell, sold and the plan is to sell it later? So that's all negotiable. You could work out, are we gonna to live together for now? Are we gonna to live together till the house sells? Uh, who's gonna live at the house until it sells? And if you're looking at that issue, then you gotta explore, okay, well, what does that mean? Does, that, does the person that's gonna live in the house till it sells and you're already divorced, do they pay all the bills? If so, what are those bills? How do you define that? Um, what do you do if a, a major repair comes up? You know, Let's say there's an agreement that your wife's gonna live in the house until it sells and you're going to move out and the divorce is final and so your wife is paying all the bills whatever that however all bills is defined she's paying all the bills she's paying the monthly utilities the mortgage taxes and insurance maybe um, but what if the furnace goes out you need a brand new furnace or what if something else happens you have a major expense so you'd want to address that in your divorce judgment you want to have the details in there the more you think this through and look at possible scenarios that could come up the, the better off you'll be. So you wanna be careful of those kind of pitfalls of, of just not discussing details going into an agreement. So, but you know, a house and what to do with a house and how things work with houses, that can definitely come into effect with divorce. Um, you know, here at Adam, we've, we've seen it all. We do divorce and family law exclusively. It's all we do. Um, we represent only men. So we've seen yeah, you know, I mean, for me, I've been doing this for 23 years. We've seen every scenario you can think of with houses and divorces. We've seen bad housing markets, good housing markets, everything in between. We've seen the days when nobody had any equity in their homes and we were had some tough choices with getting divorced with what to do with the house. We've seen really good housing markets where the house sells right away and it's not a problem. And, and then there's lots of things in between. We've seen strange things with houses strange things with what people are doing and not doing and how it affects their divorce and so we can we can give you ideas about the potential pitfalls the things to do the agreements that need to be made the ideas you need to be considering that's what your lawyer is for to help you work through those scenarios come up with the typical but also be ready for the unexpected you know that, that's what you're looking at there so that's the general idea with all of that um, divorce housing Sometimes people have even more than one house. They might have a rental property. How that affects your divorce is certainly worth discussing as well. What do you do with the rental property? Are you gonna sell it, keep it? Can you sell it? Um, or is there, are you tied into some sort of agreement? There's some timeline. Maybe you have a, a tenant that just rented it out and you got you know nine months left on their lease or things like that can affect decisions can be a, a lot of decisions to think about if you're talking about a rental property in a divorce case of course in this video we're really more looking at primary home we own the home together getting divorced what are we doing and of course there's the usual you know three options that we talk about in our other videos you keep it you sell it 
Uh, so e either you keep it, your wife keeps it, or you sell it. Those are kind of your three choices in, in general with real estate. So I hope that helps. That's kind of what you're looking at here as far as divorce and real estate and your primary residence and what you should be doing. Of course, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.